he has done dinosaur exhibitions for the most famous museums in the world, the American Museum of Natural History in New York, the Humboldt Museum in Berlin, the Smithsonian Institution in Washington. He's sort of an unsung hero in a lot of ways. He wants to create great museums around the world and be a contributor to them. My name is Peter May. I'm the local dinosaur builder. I think a really good example of, of Peter's influence on the world uh, is his work for the movie Jurassic Park, the most famous dinosaur movie and one of the most famous movies in history. We built the uh, two skeletons that get destroyed in Jurassic Park. That last scene uh, in uh, Jurassic Park where the raptors are battling with T-Rex around a T-Rex uh, and Alamosaurus skeleton, Peter May actually built those skeletons for the movie. We all went to the, watch the premiere and it was very exciting you know, when you saw it all. And, uh, and then, of course, we had to sit and wait for the credits to come up. And I think we're right at the very end of the movie. You know, research casting. You know, by then, the guy's sweeping up the pop around our feet. You know? <laughs> but, <laughs> well, there we are. I graduated from the University of Guelph in sculpture. I was working down in Stalco, Hamilton. And we were driving out there one morning. I just saw an ad in the Globe Mail looking for a uh, vertebrate paleontological technician. And I had no idea what that meant. But it just had a list of things that said, uh, must know how to make molds and cast. And I had my one rubber mold under my arm and I walked in and but I, I walked out with a job. I didn't really have any, any knowledge at all of dinosaurs. I probably knew what a T-Rex was, but at the time it was the band, right? More so than the animal. He actually started his career right here at the Royal Ontario Museum as a technician, working with paleontologists, going out on digs, collecting fossils, and uh, working in the lab, preparing those fossils for study and for display. His work got recognized through the world, and the ROM was asked to produce uh, dinosaur mounts for other museums. Three small children, you know, living in Oakville, and museums don't pay the best in the world, but it's a fantastic job. I was getting a phone call, would I mount a dinosaur in my spare time? We had a, a, a drill press and a welding machine, and we'd just mount the skeleton and then shut down everything, go back to the garage, and another call would come in. And then one day we didn't shut down. What we have here is the, uh, the block of Zool, which is an armored dinosaur. And the backbone runs down here, and then here you can see a couple of ribs. If you look under here, there's no bone, and then this one's still in place because we got a little bit of bone down there. The actual process of mounting an original fossil, putting those delicate fossil bones up into a skeleton, is extremely uh, painstaking and tedious work. Each individual bone is actually set into uh, its own special mounting system, very similar to how a jeweler sets a, a diamond into a diamond ring. But take a skeleton that has 400 bones and produce that setting for a diamond ring 400 times on the scale of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. And that's the type of work that Peter's company does. Well, during the, the preparation process, it, it's incredible, you, you know, because you're uncovering something that hasn't seen the light of day for uh, 65, 70 million years. You know, like this animal's died and, and it was tucked away in a rock somewhere. And everybody here is aware, you know, just how important these fossils are. You know, it's not just a, a fossil s sitting in a bunch of rock. Like, we know that it comes in here and, and by the time it goes out, it becomes a priceless exhibit in, in a museum. If you've been through a museum in, U in Canada or any major dinosaur museum in the world, um, chances are you've seen a skeletal mount that was produced by, by Peter May's company. One thing we're finding, which isn't very good, is that we are doing more and more whale skeletons, you know, like for museums. Is it the sign that these animals are going extinct and they're giving it to a company that specializes in working on dinosaurs and now we're working on modern mammals? You're looking at it and thinking, what's going to be the cause of this animal's extinction? We're into the the realm of where it's very possible that the, the skeleton that we collected off of the beach could be one of the last ones ever collected. And it's sort of that, you know, natural history becoming a, a historic or an extinct animal, and that's an important thing to think about. Hopefully we're inspiring the children to learn more, you know, to be part of the world and the history of the world, 
and it, it becomes a part of their lives. Thanks for watching Global News. If you enjoyed what you saw, like the video. You can also hit the subscribe button for all the latest international news and trending videos.